it is the conclusion. So I'm going to try to wrap this up. Whether or not, of course, I was reviewing Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, last video, <laughs> uh, one of the videos I didn't properly, properly uh, created. So I got a copyright strike. I, I had to chop it out, so now it's good to go. But the character in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, that we're talking about, of course, Miss Lorelai Lee. Is she or is she not a gold digger? That's what I'm going to try to conclude for good, because I'm not going to lie. Initially, I said, you know, it's hard to tell, and then I, I kind of ended on no last time. But this time, I went back and watched some clips, and I was like, uh, I don't know, man. This is kind of kind of iffy now again. So I'm kind of iffy now again. There we go. It's a crossover. Now, as I turn this music down a little more, there we go. Um, Miss Lorelai Lee. Her character, I react to it. I told you how her character arc she herself doesn't really change as the character. How we perceive her and understand her actually changes. And I kind of talk about some of the good and the bad. Um, uh, well, well, I talk about the... If I were to... You know... Try to describe what a gold digger is. Someone that has the genuine gold digger label. What characteristics would she have? Well, I said she would be attractive. You know, it would help. Initially, you know, above average. Um, of course, you know, if a woman wants to be uh, a gold digger, if she isn't, you know, 8, 9, and 10, it's not universal because, you know, 8, 9, and 10 are usually universal. Most, if not all, you know, all men, usually all straight men, it is, would prefer or desire them. Um, if she's, like, just cute, she, she, if she's average looking, she'd have the men she can kind of target. But, um... I would say she'd be attractive. She has to be able to lower, naturally lower the guard of the guys, which I did play the clip uh, where she is approached by the father of the her lover, she calls him, uh, that she's trying to marry. Uh, she's actually engaged to him during most of the of the of the movie, and the father is kind of alerted and he's aware of her, and and she's been labeled as a gold digger. To his best knowledge, as you know, I played that clip. That's actually the clip that got me. They got the copyright strike. I fixed it now, so I will play those clips. Next, I also just said, well, if it's going to be a successful, my job I'm talking about successful gold diggers. Uh, she would have to also be very witty, calculating, uh, have a considerable knowledge base. Because if she's going to deal with men with one, with money, one thing dudes with money like to do is run their damn mouth on how they earn their money and stuff. So she's going to know quite a bit about earning money in a variety of different fields. So she's going to have a decent knowledge base just because of that. She can get in the rooms, especially the young, attractive women, like in the early 20s, they can get in the rooms with the millionaires and billionaires well before any man of the same age can. Because those guys are going to be looking at her as a potential spouse or plaything. Also, she's going to, with her wittiness and, 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 and intellect, she's going to be calculating. She's going to do, if she finds the man that she deems worthy, she's going to do some research on him. She's going to know a bit about him. And in, and in a way, she's going to kind of impress that man like she did her soon-to-be father-in-law in the movie. Also, she's going to be genuinely aroused. I talk about how... Uh, arousal or excitement or, or, or attraction, you know, when you have that inherent attraction to, to someone, um, both men and women, it's, it is, it's inevitable. It's in, it's inherent. You can't voluntarily, you know, be attracted to someone. You know, I did take a snippet from, uh, what Jason Black was talking about where attraction is involuntary. Like, you can't control it. You can control your reaction or what you do after, but she is attracted to men with money. And I actually do have a clip for that as well. 
Um, but then I also dove into how it's an addiction because, mind you, being a gold, being labeled a gold digger, it's not a positive. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's like an extreme, extreme like someone who's an alcoholic. I told you about the situation with that guy who was literally, who was so such an alcoholic, he was drinking hand sanitizer. You know, that's that's if for people that don't know, that's not good for your health. But he was drinking hand sanitizer. He was more than likely spending excess amounts of his income on alcohol consumption. So anyone who knows anything about addiction, usually what makes that addiction uh, noticeable is when they start to, it, it becomes a detriment to their real life. They start to make decisions where they must, they must do whatever it is to satisfy that addiction at the detriment or at the cost of their well-being in, in society or in life. Meaning normal people wouldn't go into bankruptcy because they want to buy a bunch of alcohol. An alcoholic, he has no problem doing that. Now, these are some of the negative traits because, mind you, if someone's going to be called a gold digger, I'm assuming the gold digger is by any means necessary. They're going to be a narcissist. You know, I talk about how women have narcissistic tendencies, but no, I'm 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 pretty much going to say go out on a limb and say a, a gold digger is going to be a narcissist, right? She's going to be able to effective at faking it. She's going to be effective at manipulating, a master of disguise. Because mind you, there's different ways of becoming a millionaire. So she's going to be able to, she's got to be able to effectively get within the favor of these millionaires to get them to spend their money on her and potentially wed her, meaning she has to be malleable. Actually, I, I do believe women are naturally more malleable, moldable, learn, you know, they can, they can, you know, they're supposed to be kind of tailor made for their man that they, that they eventually uh, get chosen. But the gold digger, she's going to take it to an extreme. She's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to win by any means necessary. She's also going to be able to do, be willing and able to do nefarious stuff, blackmail, things of that nature. Because the gold digger, in my mind, she's going to do it by any means necessary. The good and the bad. She needs to get it by any means necessary because it's an addiction. And it gets her off. She's a, she's aroused by it. Her response to any man with money is pretty much the same. How can I get his money? How can I get him to buy me what I desire? Next, she's going to, she, with that risque behavior, she's pretty much going to go for any guy with money, no matter how favorable or unfavorable he is. Actually, the more loose with this money, she's actually going to favor him, even though eventually it will run out. But she's going to favor him more because she more likely sees him as an easy target. And will be able to easily access his money. I did say how women actually, modern women today, they would actually prefer a rich sucker. You know, a rich guy who is beta towards towards them. He's able to earn money, but he's he's absolutely willing to blow the bag on her and then go out there and continue to earn the money. Doesn't really matter. Might not really. Of course, you know, they would want him to be perfect. You know, they would want him to be tall, dark, and handsome. But let's just be real. He could be short and a little stubby. And as long as he's able to blow that bag on him, especially for the gold digger, it don't matter for the gold digger. She's also going to be quick to go to the next target. Once you, once that one guy like Danny Boy here, he, once he blow his bag, run out of money, on to the next one. She's not even waiting around. She's not sticking around. Nope. On to the next one. On to the next one. And femininity is a bit of an option. Because I do know most modern women today, their femininity is kind of optional. It's not really standard. Not like you know, the women like my grandmothers, our grandmothers, I guess, if you had a grandmother or great grandmother. Of course, you know, black women had to be a little tougher because they more black women worked or were out in the you know, working. But to some extent they were still protected by their men to some extent. 
And last but not least, prenuptials is a no-go. Prenuptials, you, you, if, a, if a gold digger, in my mind, if a gold digger has her target locked down and she, he's, he's looking for marriage, a prenuptial to her is the devil. Those little girls are the devil. It's the devil. You say prenup, she like, uh, no. That's, that's, you know, if, if she is to be a gold digger, right? Because mind you, we're talking about Laura Lally. We're trying to, we're trying to figure out whether or not she is a gold digger and how good or effective of a gold digger she is. So let's now react to a bit of the clips. Um, so I won. She does check some of the boxes and as I go through I'm gonna tick the boxes and, and kinda of explain. For one she has the standard. But I prefer a man who lives and gives expensive jewels. A kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. A kiss may be grand, but won't pay the rental on your humble flat or help you at the auto map. Now, in addition to that, she's pretty much, you know, laying the field. She's like, hey, if you got the funds, uh, I'm going to think highly of you. You are on my list of potential husbands, spouses, etc. Best friend. You, you're in that category. Hey, best friend. She gonna be, you know, smiling, all smiles and giggles. Now, mind you, she is feminine. She does appear to be feminine. So, all, throughout the movie, she doesn't, you know, have that fake femininity thing where she's masculine at any moment. Um, actually, I, I do talk about that later. But also, I talk about how, you know, even the first scene in the movie, it kind of sets the stage. Because, mind you, the movie does play that narrative where they're trying, where they do kind of portray her. And, or make an effort to kind of only show you the stuff that portrays her as a gold digger early on, right? Which is why we're trying to figure out, is she or is she not? Is she a really good gold digger? Is she just a typical gold digger? Et cetera, et cetera, right? So she has her standard. She's like, hey, I like nice things. This is my standard. Also, she understands, okay, I'm capable of getting it because she understands that she is attractive. We're just two little girls from Little Rock. We lived on the wrong side of the tracks. But the gentleman friends who used to call, they never did seem to mind at all. They came to the wrong side of the tracks. I think it's fair to say we kind of all, all know who the attractive people are growing up. They tend to get favor. They tend to get um, attractive women. They tend to get, you know, gifts and things from men because guys are trying to get in their favor. They're trying to get a chance at them, get have a shot at them. <clears throat> so she learns, oh, hey, I'm one of those attractive ones. Guys are absolutely willing and able to come to me and give me things, and I like nice things. So now she understands, okay, I am able to play this game at a high level. So next thing, remember how I talk about intelligence? For if she's a good gold digger, she's going to learn the game. I so she was, she and her friend were determined to get the things they desired. They were like, hey. I like nice things. I'm attractive. It appears that men are willing to give me those nice things. Let me learn the game. Let me learn how I can I can get with the guy who's going to give me these nice things. So she was determined, her and her friend were determined, hey, let me learn the game so I can get good at it. And then once she gets good at it, 
it's no longer a good game. She's taking that shit seriously. Dorothy, did you ever hear of a rich Paul Walter? Maybe not, but who cares? I like a man who can run faster than I can. I hate to think where you'll wind up. You're wasting all your time on unrefined persons without any money. Honey, did it ever occur to you that some people just don't care about money? Please, don't be silly. We're talking serious. I want you to find happiness and stop having fun. That baffles me. Now, she's like, hey... I know what I desire out of life. Let me find. Let me see if I'm able. Now, mind you, she's still young and her prime, so of course she's gonna see what her options are like. Let me go to a place. She got out of that little town. She went to somewhere like New York, where the men that were capable of giving her her desires were at. She went to 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 the men. She researched and did her study and whatever, and learned how to get around and amongst these men, and how to effectively. <clears throat> sort through her options <laughs> to, to the point where now she's found her guy she's engaged and now she's looking for a guy for her friend that's what that scene was she was looking for a guy for her friend she's like hey you need to get serious you need to play this game like I am I'm, pre I'm playing to win I ain't playing around out here she also shows and on top of that <clears throat> the seriousness of it, of it she's willing and able to teach her friend hey I ain't trying to get married alone. And in this clip, she shows how how ser how really serious and smart she is for doing what for doing her doing what she's doing, her objective, her goal. Someone whistled at her and she disappeared. I hope she's not going to be a bad influence on you. Oh no, lover, Dorothy's not bad. Honest, she's just dumb. Always falling in love with some man just because he's good looking. Oh, well, dear, that's I not... I keep telling her, it's just as easy to fall in love with a rich man as a poor man. But yeah. she says, yes, but if they're tall, dark, and handsome, she never gets around to vital statistics until it's too late. Well, that's why I'm her best friend, I guess. She really needs somebody like I to educate her. Yes, dear. So she's not waiting around. She's like, hey, you need to kind of get serious, boo. I'm, I got my man. You need to find your man, uh, and he needs to be capable to keep up with us because I'm trying to go on these trips. I'm trying to get wine and dine. I'm trying to do all this stuff, and I don't want to do it alone. And she's up here teaching her friend, trying to teach her friend, like, hey, you can find a nice guy, but, I mean, at least let him have money. You're an attractive girl, too. You're capable of pulling one. She shows how calculating and observative she is. She's able to kind of look at look look a man up and down, and kind of tell what he is, how much money he might be worth. She's able to uh, do research as well. Invalid. What are you doing? I'm checking the passenger list. Mr. Alfred Lohman, invalid. Mr. Eugene <coughs> Martin. Invalid? Why the sudden interest in valets? When a man has an valid after his name, he's definitely worthwhile. I'm simply trying to find a suitable gentleman escort for you. Well done. So she's up there doing research trying to find a man for her friend again. You, how, you, what do you think she did to get her guy? She absolutely analyzed him, looking him up and down, and was like, hey... Uh, we need to find you a dude. I got mine. We need to find you a dude. Now, mind you, she does also, this is one of the, it's a bit of a dive into the dark one. She uses this ability to analyze and choose a target just to try to get, because mind you, she likes nice things, especially diamonds and jewels. So, of course, anybody who has any kind of pull in that area, she's going to target them. Maybe not to try to marry them, maybe not to try to do that, but, but remember, she likes nice things, so she's at least going to try to persuade them to give her things because she kind of knows, hey, guys tend to like to be around me for a reason, and they like to give me things. And, and one of the characters in this, uh, in this movie who eventually evolves uh, to one of the main set pieces is, is Mr. Piggy, the diamond miner. Yes, a diamond miner. Say, is that on the level? Do you own a diamond mine? Well, I'm happy to say I do, my dear. 
Are you interested in diamonds? No, no, not particularly, but... Uh, um, really, you must be a very uh, extraordinary girl. Would you do me a favor, sir? Uh, uh, Piggy, just call me Piggy. Would you do me a favor, Piggy? Anything, my dear, name it. Would you be careful not to spread it around about your diamond mine? I wouldn't want my girlfriend to hear about that. Oh, she doesn't care for diamonds either. Huh? Believe me, Piggy, I'm only trying to save everybody trouble. Do not tell her about the diamonds. Did you say diamonds? Well, well, well. By George, I must say. No doubt about it. No siree. By George, no doubt about it at all. Miss Lee, meet Piggy. Delighted. Delighted. You did say diamonds, I can tell. Yes, my dear. You see, my firm controls the second largest diamond diggings in South Africa. But it seems that we mustn't say anything about it. This young lady has a friend. She doesn't want to know about me. I wonder why. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't. Pardon my saying so, but having heard so much about you and all, I expected you'd be much older. Me? Oh, my, you don't say. Well, by Georgia, older than what? The pyramids. Of course, I always say if a man is a certain age, he just isn't interested. Oh, honey, lay off. Oh, bless my soul, bless my soul. Notice the look she gives a friend at the I end. Like Thank you ever so much. You see that look right there at the end? Now, now, mind you, she was kind of throwing a little shit at her friend because she realized her friend was trying to keep him from her. And she's like, hey, hold on now. You know I got my hustle here. Let me see if I can get some diamonds out of this dude. Now, her friend's trying to keep her away from trouble. She kind of knows how she is, apparently. She knows that she's going to try to work her charm on him. And I guess she wants to try to save him some trouble, like she was trying to explain. But she's like, hey, girl, what, what, what you doing? I'm trying to, you know, you know what I do. Let me work my charm and see what I can get. <laughs> now, also, I did say a good gold digger. She's not going to stay around. She's going to leave. Uh, once you run out of the bag, you're going to make her sad because you, you now no longer have the ability to excite her, right? You know, because she's aroused. She's aroused by your ability to get her those things. She is genuinely aroused by it. She's excited by it. Because it's, it's a bit of an addiction, right? She needs that. So naturally, she's not going to want to stick around. And I will say, it, it kind of seems like that. Uh, at least the, part, the closest thing to it was this scene here, where... Uh, she has the uh, the opening song. Someone broke my heart in Little Rock. So I up and left the pieces there. So, you know, she's like, okay, I got broke her heart. I'm assuming it's probably because, you know, like I said, he might not have been able to fulfill her desires. And she was like, okay, let me get better at this game. And that's when she left Little Rock and went to New York. And then perfected her game and started finding bigger fish, better targets, because she understood, hey, I'm, I seem to be one of those top 1% of women. Let me see what my options are out here on the market. I did also talk about uh, one of the dark things about that women tend to do that, that um, Jason Black talks about is how women punish failure. And that is considered somewhat of a win. They might get some pleasure out of that, right? But also there's the vanity component where it's like, okay, if I'm doing good, I'm doing better. What's the purpose of me doing better if, if I can't, you know, rub it in somebody's face a little bit, right? For a kid from a small street, I did very well on Wall Street. Though I never owned a share of stock. And now that I know in the biggest banks, I'm going back home and give my thanks to the one who broke my heart. The one who broke my heart. So she's like, you know, now I got these better clothes, I got better status, I got, you know, these guys are paying my bill and stuff, you know, she might want to go back and punish the guys that broke her heart. Maybe floss on a few of the chicks that was, that was you know, because you know how women are. Y'all y'all like to down each other, especially the pretty women. Y'all like to, you know, try to, you know, put them down. But she's like, go back and rub her face and be like, hey, I'm on now. Maybe. At least that's what the song alludes to. A little bit of the dark, 
darkness there. But it's just in the song. I, I don't really see that during the movie. But one thing I will say is that that attracts she has. Um, one thing that, that, you know, I talk about modern women and how they lack that natural femininity. At least by majority, right? They kind of turn it on. And like, at least the good women, they know how to turn it on, turn it off. There's a few women, uh, maybe 20%, maybe, that are actually genuinely feminine. They're not faking it. That's just how they are. They are the type of women that, that you know, especially the top 20% of guys would desire and like. But she is really feminine. And that's one, if, if there's one thing I will say, guys love femininity, period. I bet you made me the happiest girl in the world. I don't know what you do, honey, unless you use Novocaine in your lipstick. Daddy. Daddy. Huh? And she definitely uses that charm and that ability to, let's just say, to get what she wants out of the guys that she deals with. And she's definitely natural at it, and she also knows how to carry herself. And she does give her friend a little bit of the game, like in this clip right here. You, I am the manager. May I help you? you? Certainly may. Show me a place to take my shoes off. My feet are killing me. Dorothy, please. A lady never admits her feet hurt. Bonjour. Bonjour, mademoiselle. So her friend is a little more rugged. You know, her friend is actually, if I were to say, she's a, she seems to be kind of more like a modern woman, woman right? Um, she doesn't get the same amount of pull that Lorelai gets because all the guys, just like just like Piggy that saw her, you saw how doubtful he was. Now, mind you, Piggy was married because not, not so soon after that scene that I showed, his wife comes in. Of course, she's an older woman, but... um. His wife comes in and everything. Piggy's married. And even Piggy is like, oh, yeah, if I had a chance at that, yes. And he's got a lot to lose. Now, I did play the clip also how she uses that charm to lower the guard of the guys. And she does it very effectively, like how she lowers the guard uh, naturally. Uh, the man that literally hired a private detective to try to get her caught up in something whom is her soon-to-be father-in-law at the end of the movie, right? Or during throughout the movie because she's engaged, right? To his son. And he's like, he's here, he hears about her. He, he labels her and You have to go watch the movie to understand. But his initial card is acceptance. He's, in, he's initially accepting of her. I know what you're here for, Father, and I don't care. I've made up my mind. I'm going to make her marry me. Oh, bless your heart. That's wonderful. I presume this is the young lady? Well, yes. Such a pretty little girl. My man! American? Yes, except on my father and mother's side, they're Irish. Believe me, son, I'm delighted about this. I've wanted to see you married for a long time. Anybody but that monster, Lorelai Lee. What? Okay, I, I, but I am during Laura the clip, Lee. he is initially <laughs> accepting of her. I know what you're here for, father, and I don't care. I've made up my mind. I'm going to make her marry me. Oh, bless your heart. That's I wonderful. I presume this is the young lady? Well, yes. Such a pretty okay. little girl. American? Yes. I know what you're here for, okay, Father, I'm and I don't care. I've made here. up my mind. Sure I'm going to make her marry me. Oh, bless your Hopefully heart. Hopefully my That's internet's wonderful. not trying to bug me out again. I presume this is the young again. lady? Well, yes. Such a pretty little girl. Let me try American? to... Yes, except on my father and mother's side, they're Irish. Believe me, son, I'm delighted about this. I've wanted to see you married for a long time. Anybody but that monster, Lorelai Lee. What? But Mr. Esmond, I am Lorelai Lee. <laughs> Pretty early in the game to start teasing your father-in-law. What's the matter with you, father? Nothing. <laughs> I can take a joke. What joke? Th this is Lorelai. Father, this is not the sort of thing one would joke about. I don't have my driver's license with me, but you can take my word for it. 
honest. Look, that's I. Now her pers her persuasion, of course, is also absolute. You know, as you saw her charm, her soon to be husband, also the fact that she pretty she kinda knows she can get what she wants out of him. Gus will never let you go alone. Sometimes Mr. Esmond finds it very difficult to say no to me. Well, that's So she kinda she she knows she can pretty much get what she wants out of him. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay. She's showing a lot of what could be good or ideal for an effective if someone were to be truly labeled as a gold digger. But I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I had yet to see any real risque behavior and the closest thing she got to it was with her and Mr. Piggy, but she had no real intentions on screwing up the bag with her husband, her soon to be husband. If it wasn't for the private private eye that her father in law or soon to be father in law hired to follow her, um he, they, nobody would have ever known anyway. Nobody. So it took someone to hire a private detective to even try to pin anything negative on her, which the only negative thing that came from it was she got him to give her a diamond tiara that he knew he shouldn't have been giving to her. But her persuasive powers or abilities, or he was so, he was so in awe with her he had he was just like okay let yeah here you go he pretty much gave it to her right but one of the issues uh is as i talked about why guys might uh have issue with the gold digger label in reality right because they kind of know that they have to perform or continue to keep up their performance in order to afford whomever the chick that they do get with right because mind you, like, you know, she, yeah, she's with you for a reason, not just because you have inherent value. I mean, I already talked about how guys don't really have comparative inherent value to women. You know, you need to be able to produce and provide and protect, right? But like in one of the scenes where she's also, she, she knows, she knows her leveraging ability, like in this scene here where she's able to recognize her ability. She knows her feminine charm has an effect on guys, and she does capitalize on it, much like she capitalized on Mr. Piggy. Now, the guy that she mentions in the scene, it isn't for her. Remember, she's trying to find a guy for her friend to marry. So let's just keep that in mind. So before you kind of allude to her trying to, you know, get out here and gold dig, and she's, she's no, she's looking for a guy for her friend. Now, Mr. Piggy was a diamond guy, and she has a weakness for diamonds. And like I said, attraction is involuntary. And she was very attracted by the fact that he has access, pretty much all, almost unlimited access to one of the very things that she that turns her on the most, right? So it was kind of, let's just say she, you know, within reason at least, she reacted to try to get what she could out of Mr. Piggy, right? But in this scene, she's, she's leveraging her draw on men, similar to how clubs, nightclubs, use that free women night thing, right? They know that if you get as many people, many women in here, guys are going to, are naturally one, going to want to come to try to get around the pretty women. That's why nightclubs, shout out to the promoters and all y'all, y'all know, okay, let us let the women in for free because where there are women, attractive women, there will be guys willing to simp for them, willing to pay money for the bottles and everything. And guess what happens? They, it pulls in more money and she's able to recognize and leverage that. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Are you the head waiter? At your service, mademoiselle. I'm Miss Lee. Oh, Miss Lee. Well, now I understand. What can I do for you, Miss Lee? Put a certain gentleman at my table. Oh, I'm humiliated, mademoiselle. There is nothing I can do for you. All seating arrangements are completed, final, finished. Compris? That's too bad. Once I was in Atlantic City, and all the gentlemen in the hotel wanted to sit at my table. Oh, well, I can understand that. <laughs> Some of them even went to the head waiter to give him money. That happens. What can one do? One takes it. Why not? That head waiter had to give it back. Indeed? Why? He 
Because I had all my meals in my room. I mean, I didn't even come to the table at all. So naturally, the men wanted their money back. Oh, Mademoiselle, I beg you. Do you want me to have all my meals in my room? Must not be, Mademoiselle. Of course. If Mr. Henry Spofford III is seated at my table. Oh, it shall be, Mademoiselle. <laughs> Thank you, Ella, so. I get it. You're, you guys are like, well, look at her. She's a monster. Look, she's getting everything she wants. She do the blah, 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 blah. I get it. I get it. You guys aren't able to do that. I get it. But here's the thing. Is she wrong for doing that? Is she wrong for doing that? Well, no, because guess what? Guess who also tried to leverage her beauty? He's the head waiter. He himself was trying to leverage her beauty. Just like she was talking about how the head waiter at that one place she went to, the guys paid to get at the table. Well, guess what? He himself was trying to do the very same thing. Don't believe me? May we, monsieur? Well, it's a fairly tidy sum just to get a seat at a table. Does the law of supply and demand, monsieur? Already I got many requests for a seat at Miss Lee and Miss Shaw's table, and the price goes up and up. And have. That's inevitable. Je regret, monsieur. Mm -hmm. Well, je regret it more than vous. However, the name's Malone. Better get it down there while I can still afford it. Merci, monsieur Malone. Now, mind you, right before she comes up to try to do it, to leverage, you know, the table for herself, that head waiter was doing exactly what she was describing. He was, he was trying to leverage the table where guys were trying to get at her table for her and her friend because they were the most beautiful women on the ship, and the guys were paying the head waiter to get at her table. Now, mind you, notice how the original clip, the head waiter was like, oh, well, all the, all the seats are done. All the seats are taken. You can't, we, I can't change the roster, even though he himself, the reason why he didn't want to change it was because he would have had to move somebody that literally paid him for that seat. So he was benefiting and profiting. So now I, it kind of makes me wonder, okay, yeah, she's leveraging her beauty, but guess what? She's able to do that because guess what? This guy was also able to leverage, leverage it for himself. So is it the fact that she's doing it or is it the fact that she understands that she can do it and she herself is benefiting from it even though people are benefiting from it outside of her, right? So – if you think she's trying to play a game, well, guess what? She's playing the game to win. I don't see anything wrong with that because the head waiter himself was trying to was trying to leverage her. He thought she was dumb. Well, guess what? She wasn't. She was onto the game. She was aware of it and she used it to her benefit. I see nothing wrong with that. Also, you might want to talk about well, look at that look at that guy she's with. Look at how how helpless and defenseless he is. Come on, guys. You should know yourself by now. Do you really think, as 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 simpish as he looks, do you really think he is just completely defenseless? He might look a little, he, I ain't gonna lie, he look a little moist. <laughs> he look a little moist, but let, let's just be real. Do you really think he is, is, he himself is without flaw? Dear, a lot depends on how you conduct yourself on this trip. As you know, Dad is dead set against our marriage, and well... Even the slightest hint of any scandal, even the slightest, I don't know what I could do about it. My goodness, lover, you don't have to tell me that. Oh, I'd give anything in the world if I was sailing with you, baby. Me too. I don't know what I'll do in Europe without you. I don't know what I'll do without you either. I'm not so sure about that. You can be a pretty naughty boy sometime. Oh, you don't have to worry about trusting me. Um, so. Now, remember, he's got money. He comes for money. So you already know a lot of girls be shooting their shots at him. You're going to tell me he didn't, he didn't, uh, <laughs> you're going to tell me he didn't try some of them out? You don't think she probably doesn't know that? She most likely, well, I mean, that scene right there, she's like, you can be a pretty naughty boy sometimes, too. Uh, yeah, she knows. But at the same time, she's like, hey, hey. He does what I need for him to do. He is the guy she chose, and she chose him for a reason. So, no, even he himself, he is not a victim. 
because even he himself is benefiting and doing what he does on the side. So once again, a potential negative, but it's not really a negative because she's just leveraging and playing the game. So, yes, it's hard for him to say no to her, but at the same time, he's still out there doing his thing on the side, too. But it's also like she she does talk about the, uh, of course, she gives the advice, the type of guy that she, that, you know, to go for. For her, the attraction, like, like I described with the gold digger, she's attracted to the guys with the wealth and the money. She does give that advice. Last, the last uh, broadcast, it was the ending advice, right? And here's some advice I'd like to share. Find a gentleman who is shy or bold. Or short or tall or young. So she clearly has her preferences. She has her standards. She understands the game. She realizes that she's a top one percenter when it comes to beauty. She's feminine. Guys are naturally attracted to her. I see no problem with her leveraging herself. But I know some of the red pill rages, they just look at everything she does. Similar to how her hus- her soon-to-be husband was. Hey, if there's any kind of scandal on the boat, because mind you, she's on a boat trip with her friend by herself, and I know how y'all like to talk about girls' trip, girls' trips, and how y'all be talking about they going and getting pounded out and dug out and all that other stuff. Well, guess what? She's like, well, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to fumble the bag. You, my ticket. I, I'm, I'm wanting you because she found her guy. She's like, uh, you know, you could be a naughty boy. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah, I know, I know you could be a naughty boy, and she and she still loves him in spite of that. Oh yeah, love, and she does talk about what her idea of love is, right? Now, mind you, she's she is attractive to guys that are capable of earning money, of pretty much any type of phenotype, old, young, or tall. You know, that's what that whole clip was. But she describes. Uh, to her friend, hey, this is what I, you know, this is what love is and then love and happiness, pretty much. You don't want to end up with a loveless marriage, do you? Me, loveless? That's right. Because of a girl spending all of her time worrying about the money she doesn't have, how is she going to have any time for being in love? I want you to find happiness and stop having fun. That baffles me. You'll thank me someday. Mind you, like I said, she's trying to put her, her friend up on some game. Because to her, she's like, hey, I love differently. She says, I love differently. And the guy, he needs to have certain things, certain qualities, and a certain standard. And I bring me. And she chose that guy. She chose the guy that she wanted because she loves him. But do you remember what I talk about? Uh, if there's one thing in common that I do believe she has with uh, modern women, because mind you, she doesn't have a lot in common. Because remember, she's up here talking about marriage. She's like, she ain't she ain't out here trying to do it on her own. She ain't trying to, no. She's feminine. She's attractive. She's teaching her friend how to be feminine. She's teaching her friend how to be smart, play the game. Hey, don't just give it a guy because he's good looking. He's got to be able to produce. He's got to have resources. No, she's up here like, hey, I love different, and she loves her man for a reason. Let let me let let me let her tell you this. Hi, honey. How'd Gus like your number? He didn't applaud. He looked kind of grim. Hand me my hat, there, will you, please? He is sweet, isn't he? I really do love Gus. You do, really? There's not another millionaire in the world with such a gentle disposition. He never wins an argument. Always does anything I ask. And he's got the money to do it with. How can I help loving a man like that? I guess so. Now, is she wrong for that? No. She checks the boxes for Gus, her husband, her soon-to-be husband, and he absolutely checks the boxes for her. And she's like, hey, let me become whatever it is he, he wants in me. She already has the look. 
she's already feminine. She's like, hey, I want you, you know, as long as, as soon as he opens up that position for me, he's my guy. He opened up the position, and she's like, I'm all yours. She's head over heels for him. He's got what she needs. He got what she wants. He's willing to spend the money on her. He's able to give access. Because the end game, the goal, isn't for her to get out here and trick it all for hot girl summer for the rest of her life. No, she's trying to get married. She understands the game. There is an end game to all of this. Men grow cold as girls grow old. And we all lose our charms in the end. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. She's like, I'm only going to be young and beautiful and in my prime and firm for only a certain amount of time in my life. Let me not get out here and waste my damn time. Let me, while I'm still young and pretty, while I still have my charm and my ability to get these guys to trick on me, to to be attracted to me, to want to marry me and take care of me, let me not use my best years to get out here and hot girl summer it up. Let me instead... Get one of these producing guys, one of these wealthy guys, who more or less they come with a, with a good pedigree, meaning they're, they come from wealth, because, you know, the best predictor of the future is the past, right? So if Pop is rich and the son is capable and also comes from that, I mean, you know, let's be real. Wealth begots wealth. All he got to do is not blow the bag like Danny Boy. All you got to do is not be Danny Boy. And you're good. So she is different. She she is capable. And she's definitely within the realm of ability to get what she desires. Unlike most modern women. She did her work. She put in the work. She's naturally feminine. She is what guys desire to be with and around. Guys are happy to give her stuff. Look at, you remember the face on Mr. Piggy? Look how excited, go back, rewind and go look at him. Look at how baffled he is just by looking at her, just by being with her. Everywhere she is, she, he wants to be with, around her, with her. This guy is married. All the other guys are paying to be around her. They're going to the head waiter to try to buy the seats next to her or near her friends because they just want to be around her and her friends. They all want they all want a shot at her. They're like, hey, I might be able to get her as my wife. I might be able to get with her. And and you know, of course, you know, she only she only wants to deal with the guys that are willing to trick off on her or marry her. She's not out here throwing the butt, let's just be real. I didn't see any of that in the movie. She might have talked about it in one of the opening songs. You know, the you know things or things didn't work out with the guys in the past, which is why she might have gotten that gold digger tag, right? I believe she does kind of lose it in the movie, but you got. I mean, you can watch it for yourself. But she does kind of she does get that gold digger tag from uh, as as we're kind of describe it from. Uh, probably the the prior men that she was trying to deal with. But remember, guys are giving her stuff. She's not forcing it from them. They're willingly, happily giving her stuff, which is why, like, okay, my thing is, if you're a guy, you go to casino, because, mind you, this is kind of like them risking their bag just to try to get her. She's the prize, right? You go to a casino, you blow all your money, and then you blame the casino for you blowing your money. Where, where's the reason in that? I don't, I don't, that, that, does, that doesn't make sense to me. You go to the casino to try to get, to try to win big. You blow your bag to try to win big. You risk it to try to win big. And then when you lose, then you complain and then you try to blame the casino for you losing your money. I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, I don't. No, it makes no sense. But in the movie, 
I do believe, of course, like I said, you, you've probably seen this that, that one little clip of her describing where she's coming from, and it really turns the perception of her on the head, where there is that scene towards the end where she is pretty much confronting the father-in-law that hired the private eye that's pretty much he'd unheard about her because she probably dealt with other she probably dealt with other wealthy guys and they tell her like I said the, the guys that tried to blow the bag on the casino and then they blame the casino they blew the bag lost and then they start complaining like oh she's a gold digger and they label her a gold digger because they didn't get her because they spent all that money on her because she was attractive and then when they didn't get her because she they didn't meet certain requirements because mind you she's got options because they didn't meet the requirements or standards that she desired, they labor her gold digger. I'm here to change that narrative. You know, all women, if if you want to say just like women have narcissistic tendencies, yes, all women are supposed to be gold diggerish. They're supposed to want you and desire you for you, for your resources and power and status. Now that is one thing I will say that I did uh, when it comes to status. I w I'm aware that women do like status. I mean, because they're vain, they're vanity. They like the status. But uh, I will say, Jason Black, when I watched one of his episodes the other day, and he's talking about how people in general, uh, they kind of have a preference towards status. That's why, like, one of the first things, one of the first videos I did was on uh, Kim Kardashian and how she did what she did to get the fame, and then she monetized the fame, and now she's a freaking, you know, borderline billionaire, right? I mean, of course, her and Kanye are no longer together, so, you know, she might have taken a little dip. But she's borderline billionaire, right? Because she ate, she was able to get that status, that fame, for pretty much doing virtually nothing. At least when it comes to the work world, right? But she was able to leverage her abilities that she did have, her, her beauty, whatever, attractive, net, attractive level, her ability to leverage it effectively against the right men and then work her way into the media and, and be around the right people at the right time, at the right moment. She did whatever she was needed. Like, go, go watch that, those first few videos where I was talking about uh, how her career, or, or lack thereof, pretty much got started and how she built her fame up and monetized it. Because she got her own money. You know, she might have been labeled a gold digger once upon a time, but she got her own money now. She was able to monetize herself. And I think... This clip kind of turns the nail on its head when people gave Lorelai Lee, especially she's confronting the very man who's, like, trying to prevent her from getting her man, which is, you know, the man she's trying to marry, because his father is the one that pretty much doesn't want her because he has heard about her from probably those complaining guys that labeled her a gold digger. He's like, my son will not, like, will not marry a gold digger. Oh, no. So we saw how she lowered how naturally he has a lower guard around her, right? When he doesn't know who she is, his guard is usually lowered. Now his guard is raised because now he's alerted to who she is. He's heard about her as a gold digger, but at the same time, she's able to just be her and persuade this man in the end with, with, with knowledge and common sense. And she's like, hey, I'm labeled a gold digger, and I'm not really a gold digger. That's, that's, that's what she's claiming that she isn't. So you be the judge here. Well, I'm too old for this sort of thing. Father, I don't understand. You don't understand? How do you think I feel with thousands of Laurel Lees coming at me from everywhere? My man! Believe me, son, you're not going to marry any one of them. Father, I love her. I love her very much. I've never had a feeling oh, like this. Up. Young lady, you don't fool me one bit. I'm not trying to. But I bet I could. Hello there. No, you might convince this jackass that you love him, but you'll never convince me. That's too bad, because I do love him. Certainly, for his money. Hello there. No, honestly. Have you got the nerve to stand there and expect me to believe that you don't want to marry my son for his money? It's true. Then what do you want to marry him for? I want to marry him for your money. <laughs> Oh, Lorelei. Don't you see? That's why we have to have his consent, silly. Well, at least we're getting down to brass tacks. You admit that all you're after is money. No, I don't. Aren't you funny? Don't you know that a man being rich is like a girl being pretty? You might not marry a girl just because she's pretty. But my goodness, doesn't it help? 
And if you had a daughter, wouldn't you rather she didn't marry a poor man? But I was... You'd want her to have the most wonderful things in the world and to be very happy. But why is it wrong for me to want those things? Well, I can see that... <gasps> Say, they told me you were stupid. You don't sound stupid to me. I can be smart when it's important. But most men don't like it. Except Gus. He's always been interested in my brains. No. No, that much of a fool he's not. Father, you've changed your mind. I don't know, son. I just don't know what to tell you. Daddy? Huh? My man! No, Daddy, not you. I guess I mean Sonny. I'd like to spend about three minutes alone with your father. Three minutes alone? Run along, darling. Yes, dear. Now, Mr. Bessie, about what you were speaking. Well, there's a great deal to consider. I just... Now, I do agree that judgment is a part of life. People judge people based off of how they look, which is one of the reasons racism is a problem, because you look the way you look, and people judge you inherently off of it. Right? People judge people off the way they act. Right? But in this case, with Laura Lee, right? Naturally, he was accepting of her. Until he realized who she was, because he had heard about her. Apparently, you know, he was surprised that she was actually smart, because, like I said, those guys that blew the bag and labeled her as a gold digger early on, that he had heard about her from, most likely they were like, hey, because they lost, they were sore losers, and most likely they were like, hey, she's an airheaded, bubble-headed, you know, gold digger. She ain't, she's stupid. She, she's dumb. She's an airheaded gold digger because she didn't want me, because they, they were probably... They're probably fucking narcissists them, them, them themselves. She's like, hey, she, she, she didn't want me. I'm the best thing walking. You know, oh, she's an airheaded dumb dumb. She just wanted me for my money. No, she just didn't want you because you weren't the best option for her. And I say that because she actually has the leverage and ability where pretty much every guy is an option for her almost. She's a top one percenter. Now, she is smart enough to realize that her beauty won't last forever. And she's like, let me get out here and find my winner. Keyword, her winner. Everybody's different. Everybody has different uh, standards. She made it very clear what her standards were. She talked about the type of guy she likes. Essentially, she can get what she wants out of him. He's able to do it. What, what's that T.I. thing? It ain't tricking if you got it. He's willing to spend the money on her. He he enjoys her company, her beauty, and everything like that. He understands that, hey, she actually is kind of, she, is, she actually is smart. Because she actually is. She, she's she's calculating. She, she is smart. She's witty. Every guy likes her for her reason. Yes, she looks great, but at the same time, she's feminine. She's a, she's a joy to be around. She's got married guys trying to be around her. She's got guys paying to be around her. Yes, she has leverage. Most modern women don't have that type of leverage. Like I said, she's a top one percenter. But the problem is, most modern women, and when I say most, it, it does mean like 51% or something like that. That is most. They act as if they do. And that's why I say most modern women suck at being gold diggers because they're not reasonable. Also, not once did Laura Lyle ever even, did you ever even think that she would align with that whole narrative that she doesn't need a man. She is like, oh, fuck no, I need my man. She, marriage is the end goal. She's like, I am not trying to be out here forever. I ain't trying to get out here and outcompete these men. No, I ain't built like that. Look, I, she said, I'm trying to hitch my, my damn trailer to the best damn horse, hitch my wagon to the best damn horse, and I'm going to be a pretty wagon. I'm going to be a pretty ass, nice ass wagon, and I ain't going to be a father. She might be able to even be leveraged, because mind you, she can make some money. She's, she's, a, she's a show girl, so she's making her own money reason, reasonably, right? Guys want to be around her, so mind you, like, even if she's married, guys are still going to want to be around her because she's just a joy to be around. She's attractive. She's feminine. Guys love 
feminine women. The same way women love masculine men. They, if you can't, it's, a, it's involuntary. What You're attracted to what you're attracted to. Now, her husband can benefit from that. Like Mr. Piggy. Who's to say that she doesn't, you know, contact, get in contact with Mr. Piggy, and then her and her husband work out some sort of business deal? You see what I'm saying? Like, he can potentially leverage her, her ability to attract men, to get in the room with men that he might not otherwise know or be aware of. Yes, that is absolutely possible. But let's get back to the, text, to, to, to the topic. Is she a gold digger? Is she a gold digger? <sighs> let's, let's run it down. She's attractive. Yes. She is intelligent and witty. Yes. She is aroused by money and men with it. Yes. Is it a bit of an addiction? Maybe. Maybe. Because the riskiest thing she got was trying to work on Mr. Piggy, and she was not trying to uh, get sexual with them, but she was in a in a not favor not so favorable situation with them. Where I guess he asked to kind of you know talk with her in her room, and they were he was pretty much talk, talking about. You know, when he tried, because, you know, like I said, guys like to run their mouth. He was talking about how he was in Africa and the animals in Africa and whatnot. And then, and then he tried to constrict her like a boa constrictor. I mean, he, let's just be real. He, he, you know how them old dudes are. They just get touchy, touchy, filly, filly. They need a reason to touchy, touchy, filly, filly on you. And he, and his reason was he was trying to show her what a boa constrictor does. <laughs> and then the private eye was at the window and took that picture. That's the riskiest thing she did. Not once. Did it seem like she was trying to cheat on her husband? Not once did it seem like she was trying to leave her husband. She was just trying to capitalize off of a, a potential lead, which was Mr. Piggy. Hey, you got access to diamonds? I want. I like diamonds. Let me see what I can get out of you. She wasn't like, okay, let me see if I can leave my leave my husband. Because even when when she found out the dude was married, her 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 nothing changed because it was very clear. I'm not trying to marry this dude. I'm just trying to get what I can out of him. She was nice and, you know, was up there striking up a conversation with his wife. She was like, hey, I'm just trying to get some, I'm trying to get some diamonds out of him because she knows how she has this effect on guys and guys tend to give her what she likes. And she's just like, hey, let me see what I can do. Do I think she's fake? No. Like I said, her character arc or lack thereof, she doesn't she doesn't change throughout the entire movie. She does, she literally stays the same from start to finish. The only thing that really changes is our perception of her. So no, I don't think she's fake. She's just genuinely herself. That's what it seems like. That's that's what I get from the movie. That's what I get from her character. She is who she is. She doesn't hide it. She makes it very clear. Hey, I like guys that have resources. That's the type of girl I am. She's attractive. She's naturally feminine you know she doesn't have to fake it to, to try to get what she wants no she's naturally feminine so no she doesn't do that and she's not dating a, a completely reckless guy you know he's got pedigree and um yeah she's not dating a reckless guy she's actually got a fairly good guy that's capable of continuing to earn money or and he comes for money so she's not reckless to that extent. So even if she is addicted to it, she's not addicted to the point where she's destroying her own life to get what she wants. And she definitely didn't forfeit. Like I talked about her femininity, it's genuine. She's not faking it. She doesn't have to forfeit it. Because unfortunately, especially for the women that think they can compete with the men, you forfeit your femininity. When you're getting out here competing against men, you're forfeiting your your femininity essentially. That's what that's what you're. Doing. You're pretty much saying, "Hey, I need to become. I need. I'm trying to compete against you men. Therefore, you become masculine. You forfeit your femininity." Now, this I also did get from Jason Black, where he does state the fact, which I absolutely agree with: femininity does not exist without masculinity. 
because it's the lack of masculinity that women become more masculine because they have to. They have to become masculine to survive in the world. Whereas when they have a masculine man around, that's when they become more feminine. You remember how I talked about uh, one of the, the perks or one of the secrets where when, the more my, my wife does for me, the more I desire to do for her. She gives me incentive to do more. And then guess what? She becomes more submissive, more feminine, gives me more. And then that gives me even more reason to do even more for her. And it's a, it's a, it's a never ending feedback loop. She does for me. I do for her. I do for her. She does for me. She does for me. I do for her. It's, it's never ending. That's how it's supposed to be. And she becomes more and more feminine the more I'm able to do what I do. That's just how it is. That being said, to conclude, but let me get let me get a moment here. To conclude. Do I think Lorelai Lee, the character of Lorelai Lee that is portrayed in this movie, do I believe she is a gold digger? Gold digger? I can't, no. I can't, I can't say she is a gold digger. I can't. She definitely has, now, gold digger, she definitely has a goal. She has a standard, yes. But gold digger, No. She does not exhibit enough, if any, of the negative potential traits that I describe that a gold digger might have. She's not completely ruthless. She doesn't fake it. She doesn't seem to have to fake it. Guys just naturally like her as she is. Now, she is calculating and witty and smart. She knows her abilities. She knows she's one of the the very attractive women. She leverages her abilities, but let's just be real. Who doesn't? That's what you're supposed to do. I think she's just a smart, capable woman. That's what I believe. She's using her abilities like she's supposed to to get the best option. And her guy, the one she fell in love with because he ticked the boxes that she desired and she ticked his boxes and took up that, that role he had for her to play in his life, she was absolutely submissive, absolutely feminine, and absolutely genuine as it appears. No. She is not a gold digger. Not to me. Not to me. She is just a very effective, smart, calculating, capable, attractive woman. Because she does what she's supposed to do. She, she got the best option, the guy that's able to take care of her. He's able to feed into her vanity, and she's able to do for him as well. She's able to, to, to give him incentive to do what he does, and therefore he returns the favor. And like I said, that feedback loop, it just keeps going and going and going. So, no, me personally, I don't believe that she's a gold digger, and I do believe it was a bit deceptive. I mean, it was on purpose. You know, I get it. It's a movie. That's how it's supposed to be. They portrayed her as a gold digger initially. That's what the characters, even her friends, was kind of kidding around the whole time, like, oh, this guy has money. You know, be careful. Lorelai's coming. You know? But at the same time, Lorelai was like, hey, I got my man. That's my husband. I just want to leverage my beauty to see if this guy's willing to give me something. (laughs) Now, what do you think? Because I do believe most modern women, they try to be a Lorelai Lee. They try to get what she can get, but they don't qualify for it. I think most modern women try to be gold diggers, but they absolutely suck at it. I gave the analogy of, on how I, uh, the, uh, the company and the employee concept, where, where the man is the, empl- is the company and the, and the woman is the, uh, the, the employee and how that dynamic work, dynamic works out. Each one has its ability to leverage against the other, but at the end of the day, 
it's the company that initially takes the lead. It's the company that that's supposed to have the position open and it's supposed to be an established. It's supposed to be cold and calculating. Similar to how Lorelai was talking about in that song. Men grow cold and eventually she grows old and loses the charm. So she's like, let me get my guy while I'm at while I am most capable of lowering their guards. Because I will tell you this. Women do naturally lower the guard of men. Naturally, because because in that analogy, got men see other men as competition because they're other companies. You know, you're trying to earn, earn money. You're trying to, you know, compete and earn money in the economy. And he's a, he's in competition with you, so he's naturally a, a somewhat of an enemy. But men see females as potential contributors or employees. So naturally, especially if she's a good potential employee, you're going to want to give her some favor. You're going to be like, hey, you're going to be nice and polite to her initially because you're trying to recruit her. You're trying to see what she's about. But when you get approached by that guy, when you see another guy, okay, your competition you might try to see, make sure he ain't trying to screw you over, right? Because you know how some companies are. They try to screw over other companies. And as long as he's not trying to screw you over, I mean, you, you're going to maintain your guard up because you kind of know it, it's, still, it's still possible, right? But at the same time, you might do business. You know, companies do business with other companies all the time. You might do business with one another. You might share some, some little trade secrets here and there, maybe, but you won't share the company secrets. You know, the company trade secrets, because remember, you don't want to make your competition too good, right? But you'll, 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 you'll share one, with one another because, you know, it's a give and a take. Okay, I'll give you some information. They give you some information. Y'all, y'all game each other up a little bit, especially if y'all aren't really in the same industry, right? Hey, let's work together. Let's do business together. Let's try to help one another out. Let's be a little more capable to work together. If that company really wants you, you know, really wants to work with y'all because y'all might be able to actually, you know, do something where, okay, both of y'all can benefit from working with one another. Okay, then maybe you'll share some trade secrets with one another because you're trying to game them up and be like, hey, I'm the best option for your company. And then guys might, you know, share a little something. But initially, you know, hey, you are some competition to me. But yeah, I don't think Laura Lightly is a gold digger, and I'm going to end it there. So, till next time, guys. Keep at it. You are already dead.